Oh, good morning. Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. How are you all today? I want to talk today about is it too late? Is it too late for those of you who, who <clears throat> don't feel you're as prepared as you need to be? Or even for those of you who may not have seriously started preparing yet? So I'm going to get into that. And I'm going to say right off, the answer is no, it's not too late. So I'm not going to keep you hanging on that. It's not too late, and I'm going to tell you why and kind of how to get started with it. Um, first off, before we get into this, welcome to everybody. Welcome to all the new people, both on YouTube and on Patreon. It's great to have you. Your comments are even getting better than they used to be. And for any new people, uh, I've, I've always said that I have the smartest commenters in YouTube land. And, and I'll tell you what, it is, it is rivaled. I won't say that they're better, but it is certainly rivaled or and equaled by the people over on American Reversion, my other channel, where we talk more about the political aspects of things. So if you're interested in that, come join us over there. I always put the link down below uh, in, in the information box and in a pinned comment in which I say I explain how to get to the Patreon channel and then how to buy my books both on Amazon and <clears throat> through me directly for uh, for autographed copies, which speaking what of which I should probably say that now that whatever kind of ad you saw in the beginning of this this video, uh, whether it was Sandy Hook Promise, in which case I suggest you skip those, or anything else that might have been more interesting to you, this video was actually brought to you brought to you by my book, The Reversion. And my other books, The Revival, The Renewal, the uh, An Appeal to Heaven, and The Blessings of Freedom. This is the Stonemont series. These are the books that I wrote explaining how to prepare for, survive, and rebuild after a complete collapse of the world around you. You know, a lot of people don't know, and I, I forget this, a lot of people don't know that I'm a writer. That's what I do for a living. And, uh, and I only started this channel <clears throat> a couple of years ago or whenever it was, I don't know, <clears throat> to kind of explain more about what was in the book. So, uh, and so a lot of people who haven't been with me um, for very long don't realize that that's, that's who I am. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I think you'd enjoy the books and the way to get them is, is listed down below. And this video is brought to you by the Second Amendment. I do want to add something before we get into the topic. Uh, <clears throat> got up this morning and I saw that there had been a a shooting at a at a youth camp. And let me try to remember Duncanville, I believe Duncanville, Texas, at a camp. Um, and since we just dropped our kids off at, at a camp, two of our kids off at a camp yesterday, of course that that jumped out at me. <clears throat> what apparently happened and there there are sketchy details it happened yesterday and the 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 news item just came out today and i would have expected there to be a little more detail in the reporting there's not and i don't know what that means but uh apparently a guy went into a school or some kind of a location where a, a youth camp was being held from for uh, four to 14 year olds he was uh, uh, the building looked like a school, so I don't, I don't know. I'm in a picture of it. Uh, <clears throat> a staff member confronted the individual, uh, somebody in the lobby who had come in. Turned out the guy had a gun. Uh, so a staff member confronted him. Um, they say that other teachers or other counselors inside heard the gunshots and, and hurried the kids into classrooms. Uh, I heard gunshots in the lobby where the staff member had confronted the individual. Um, it didn't say whether the person had been shot, uh, and that's what I'm kind of surprised at. I would have expected that information to be included, <coughs> but it wasn't. And uh, they called the police. Police showed up two minutes later and killed a guy. That's right, that's how it's supposed to be done. Good for the counselor, good for the staff members. They did say, one one sentence in there said that he did uh, shoot one or more rounds in a classroom where kids had been, were, but there were no injuries. So anyway, good good job on that. Just another, another example 
of why these places need to be hardened and and hardened with people equipped and prepared to stop the threat right ohio did i see that the dewine up there for you guys in ohio dewine just uh, signed a <clears throat> a bill allowing teachers and other school staff apparently uh, custodians uh, uh, whoever uh to carry to carry in their schools after probably a, a modicum of training and, and such as that seemed like and then there was another bill and i'm not sure if this is attached to that bill or not <coughs> excuse me allergies um, um allowing allow again i i guess i guess it was a step to what they call constitutional carry uh in in ohio so so good for for ohio on that okay <clears throat> is it too late to start prepping no every now and then i will see comments in in on one of my videos occasionally on some um, somebody else's videos to where somebody will come on and make a statement like if you haven't already prepared if you're not always pre already prepared it's too late you know i i usually let that stuff go it it, it really doesn't i mean it doesn't rise to the to the level of you know requiring an answer or deserving an answer because it's it's just a a, a blasted comment if you haven't done this then such and such there's no basis for it you know there's no they don't give any evidence it's it's a blasted opinion which is unsupported and unsupportable okay until the thing what happens um, and, and I think that this has a tendency to to probably kind of uh, demoralize uh, people who have just recently got into the preparedness mindset and I think that's unfortunate I think that it's wrong and I think that where I've kind of let these things go in the past I'm probably gonna start uh, confronting them uh, about this because it's uh, it's unhelpful <coughs> it's unhelpful you know the old saying that the best time to plant an apple tree was 20 years ago and the next best time is now right okay that's kind of what the deal here would it have been better to start preparing a year ago 10 years ago 20 years ago yeah yeah probably so I mean then you would have been able to do it a little bit at a time and by now pretty much be set pretty much be set and, and if you want to know what I mean by be set pretty much be set I explain it all in there I probably didn't say the, the, this is a series this is a novels uh, yeah it, it, it's it's like a textbook in a, in a novel exactly all the things that you want to do to be ready to be prepared for pretty much anything that comes along um, so yes if you had started a long time ago you would have been able to do it little by little and pretty much be set now but but what if you haven't okay and most most people haven't and I would say that you know uh, especially as a result of the things that have been happening over the last few years more and more people have been drawn to to the prepping mindset okay and I think a lot of times you know people were put off by the, the term prepper and, and I agree with so many I don't like it but I don't see anybody has come up with anything better I do use the term self-reliant uh, as not a an adjective but as a verb that a person should be a self-reliant meaning relying on self as opposed to outside interconnected systems over which you have little or no control um, but you know most people are, are, are you know stuck in the in the prepper term and and so so be it um, but but over the last few years so many things so many things that have happened uh, whether it was you know the, the the attacks against 2a that got a lot of people in and to, to looking at buying guns you know I, I don't think there's been a better salesman for for guns than Obama and Biden um, good right um, 
whether it was the toilet paper shortage, you know, that everybody was, oh my gosh, you know, and I, you know, a lot of people make fun of, of that. Uh, oh, you toilet paper hoarders and all. Well, you know, I, I never made fun of them. I mean, that it's a comfort of life, right? It's a comfort of modern life. And if that's what gets people to understand it, by using one particular example, that we, that we rely so much on a supply chain that is extremely fragile, good. That's good. Good. Now, what if you haven't? And, and I, I will, I'm going to here uh, invite all of our commenters because we have got some sharp, sharp people in this bunch. Uh, leave your advice because I'm not going to try to get to everything. Okay, there's no way in, in a 20, 30 minute uh, video that I'm going to get to everything. And I'm not going to try. Uh, I'll hit some high points and then everybody else feel free leave your advice for newer preppers down below uh, and you you people who consider yourself newer preppers and I, I would put that in the category if you've just come on board in the last couple of years okay and and for those of you who came on last week don't feel like that means oh my gosh he says that a newer prepper somebody started two years ago and I just started last week I just realized that I should do it I'm I'm screwed. No, no, you're no, you're not. No, you no, you're not. So you know, don't don't think that because you're haven't been doing it for however long time. Great, welcome. You're headed in the right direction now. Uh, I'm just going to say a few things about how to get headed in that direction, and you go at it because nobody can tell you. Nobody can tell you when. Whatever is going to happen that's going to happen that make it necessary is going to happen. Was that a convoluted enough sentence? You know, it's, it's kind of like the people who will also come on and leave comments like, uh, well, the end of the world is coming and it's not going to do you any good to prepare. And uh, so you're screwed. You know, the end of the world is coming, and, and they will lead these long screeds, you know, out of Revelation and, and all of this, proving, or trying to prove, that it's coming, and it's coming now, and, and all this. So let me say a word about that. Uh, for First, for those of you who leave those comments, and I'm going to do so lovingly and kindly, and for those of you who may read those comments and think, oh my gosh, okay. And I'm not going to turn this into a religious video. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm not totally unfamiliar with eschatology. Okay, Fancy word for study of the end times. I have done a bit of research on it. Others have too. And those who hold a definite this is what's going to happen and this is when it's going to happen usually have an extremely limited exposure to eschatologic, eschatological thinking okay they have heard one way they believe it okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna challenge your beliefs but they are resistant to considering any other way. And more importantly, they have no idea how complex the subject is. They don't realize that there are all different kinds of opinions on this, and all of them can be very well supported. Jesus' disciples themselves and his followers fully expected for him to return for the essentially the end of the age, the end of the world, as some people would think of it, while they were still alive. They were convinced of it. And this is for you, you newer preppers, think about this, and what you might hear from those who say, it's too late. Every generation since then, there have been those who made the case and were totally convinced the end times is now. The end, this is the last generation, 
The Bible proves it. This proves it. Different verses prove it. I've read. I'm not unfamiliar with the Bible. You can join me over at Stonemont Church if you'd like to see what I think about things. Um, so no, the, the, these are simply opinions that the people don't don't understand. Their argument does not support. One last reference to this. Jesus himself said, you will not know the day. Okay. There's a whole different, but Steve, he said that by these signs shall ye know that the... I can argue that with you all day long, so let's not, okay? Christ also said to his disciples, if you don't have a sword, sell your garment and buy one. What's implied in that? It's up to you to provide for your own defense. And by that, he also said, <clears throat> you does not have a purse. Let him get a purse. Okay? That means that Jesus had provided for all of their needs. This is getting a little bit religious. Don't worry, we're headed back. But it does apply. It applies. What, what's, who's, who's more knowledgeable than God, for crying out loud? You know, I'm not going to apologize for this. Who is more knowledgeable about preparedness and what's coming than God? And he said, you know, get a sword. And then he said, when I was with you, I provided for everything, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be with you. I'm, I'm going to send a comforter, okay, the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I will not be here to provide for your physical needs. If you don't have a purse, get one. That means if you don't have money, get money. Take with you the ability to provide for your earthly needs. This is not spiritual. This is our physical earthly needs, okay? That's all I need to say about that. Did he tell him it's too late? I'm leaving. No, he didn't. Okay, and it's not too late. So if you're just if you're new to the, the the preparedness game, whether that be within the last two years or whether that's been within the last two hours before you stumbled upon this this video, it is not yet too late to start. The sooner you start, the better. <clears throat> the more the better you start, the better. And what I mean by that is, you know, the, the more you understand the basic principles of preparedness and the more that you can do as quickly as possible. And that depends on your resources, to be real honest. Do you have the money to do it? And some don't. If you don't think you have the money to really get started in a big way, start in a small way. And if you've got the money to go down and, and, and I started with food and water, now you should have a little tool to be able to protect yourself. I'm probably not going to get into that on this one. Food and water and shelter. You probably already got shelter. You got a house, right? Okay. Um, it gets more complex when we get into having secondary locations and all that. That's not for beginners. Uh, but read my book. It'll tell you all about it. Uh, the first one pretty much tells you all about it, and then the others are tell you more about it. Um, if you have the money, go out there and, and stock your food. And you need a, a way to make sure that you purify water. For that, for the water, I suggest a Berkey filter. Berkey, it is the standard. Look it up. I think it's BerkeyFilters.com or something like that. It's a little pricey. It costs you several hundred dollars. If you've got several hundred dollars, there's no more important thing in the world than to have a way to take ditch water and turn it into pure water, and a Berkey will do that. Uh, it, it, it is so good, it'll filter out viruses. I remember when I when we first got ours, and we would joke about, who is going to need to filter out viruses? Well, <laughs> I guess we learned, didn't we? And in addition, to the, in addition to that, or if you can't afford that, I suggest the Sawyer water filters. You can get them Amazon, you can get them um, Academy, you can get them anywhere, probably Mary, Walmart, probably everywhere. Sawyer, like Tom Sawyer. Sawyer, I know I've got kind of a, an accent, so people say, what did you say? Sawyer, S-A-W-Y-E-R. I carry a, a little mini in, uh, 
in all of our bags. All of our bags have a Sawyer Mini. Now somebody will say, Life Straw, I have Life, get a Life Straw. Life Straw is, 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 <laughs> is for, uh, it was kind of the first one that everybody knew. No, I don't suggest Life Straw, here's why. It's rated for a thousand gallons. Maybe they've increased it a little bit since then. Sawyer Mini is rated for a hundred thousand gallons. Sawyer's a little bit less expensive, maybe about the same. You choose, okay? Do you want a thousand gallons? Do you want a hundred thousand gallons? You decide. Um, so start with that, and and then start bringing in food. If you have the money to do it, do it all at once, and I will take you back. And if you don't, if you don't, before I get to that, if you don't have the money, start to the extent that you can. Okay, buy things on sale. There will be those who say, buy what you eat because uh, if you don't like what you buy you're not going to eat it okay well I, you know I, I agree by what you eat but here's the thing you get to starve and you're going to like whatever's there you know you're going you, here, here here's a cup of gruel would you like it yeah you bet you know just ask anybody who's been in 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 the gulag in siberia if they refuse to eat because they didn't have their preferred borscht okay so that's kind of a silly argument um no you you, you will eat you'll be surprised with your you'll eat if you're starving and and that's really what you're you know preparing against um but yeah it, to the extent that you can buy buy the things that are palatable to you buy the things that are good but you don't have to buy a uh, long-term storage this stuff that you see on and there there might be a uh, an ad on here for some of that stuff uh that long-term pre-prepared survival food the last 25 years uh, it's expensive. It's too expensive. It doesn't taste that good. And there's no reason to do it. One of my very first, if you want to know how to do it, one of my very first videos that I made was, I think it was called The Next Step, and it was about stocking food. And it was just food that you buy at the grocery store. Just food. And, and I talk all about it. I go through all sorts of things. So go back and check that one if you'd like. Uh, go to the little tab that says oldest to newest or something. You'll find the one where I'm sitting at the my dining room table with some food in front of me, and and I think it's called the next step. And uh, you know everything that comes in a box or a whatever like that will last you know a year or two or a jar. Canned goods will last longer than you'll be alive. And and I'll get people saying, well, you got to rotate the canned goods. And it's been interesting, and here's where it's important to be able to learn. It's interesting that I will explain, because somebody will say, you got to rotate your canned goods. <clears throat> I have explained that they have found canned goods in sunken river boats on the Missouri and the Mississippi rivers. And they found canned goods in them that were still good to eat. Now, they had lost some flavor, they had lost some nutritional value, but they were still good to eat. You could eat them and, you know, you didn't die. You didn't get botulism or anything, and, uh, and they, they were fine. Our canning processes, how much do you think our canning processes have improved since the 1870s or 80s? Quite a bit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So if a, can, if, if a can of food that was canned in the 1870s or 1880s, you can still eat it today. How often do you think you need to rotate your, your canned goods? And so I say to the people, okay, well, if you think you need to rotate them, make sure that you rotate them every 150 years. All right. Okay, I'm not putting people down like that. They just didn't have the information. And it, there's, there's a tendency to just, you know, accept the first thing that somebody says. Uh, and there's a lot of truisms in preparedness. A lot of things with which I absolutely disagree. I mentioned the golden hordes the other day. And I have my reasons for disagreeing with this. But, but the way that they get to be truisms is somebody says something. And then they get repeated ad nauseum by people who haven't, you know, haven't really sat down and say, hmm, is that, is that true? Is that right? Do you think that's right? No. And so it just gets passed on and on by people, uh, you know, trying to, to act like they know what they're talking about. And it finally gets to the point to where if you disagree with something that's false, the falsehood has become so commonly accepted, it will sound like you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> right and isn't, isn't that something isn't that the, the way it is it, that's right
So start, you know, start with your water, start with your food. Uh, and just get a little bit. If you can't afford to get much at the time, if you got an Aldi's next to you, great. What I suggest is, is just <clears throat> get a flat of, uh, of basic stuff to begin with. Canned soup, you know, uh, Progresso soup, Campbell's Chunky Soup, whatever, chili. Aldi's chili is 86 cents a can. You throw that on some rice, which is cheap as can be, and you've got a meal for four people. You've got a, you can feed four people for probably a buck and a half. And so that, that's a quick way to start getting prepared. Get your foodstuffs in line. You'll be surprised if you hadn't already done this. And you can do this if you live in an apartment. Um, <clears throat> you'll be surprised if you haven't already started. And the commenters will, will verify this. How much better you'll feel when all of a sudden you realize, wow. I've got a month's worth of food here. If, if if something happened, I wouldn't have to go to the store for a month. And then six months, and then a year, and then two years. People ask me, how long should I prepare have food stocks? Well, I take it from a biblical perspective, but, but realize this. Stored food only has one purpose, and that's to feed you until you can start producing your own food. Okay. So you want to start learning how to do that. Anyway, how long do I suggest people have food stored for? Seven years. Seven years, Steve, why? Well, that's what Joseph had the Egyptians do, right? The, the dream that he, Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph said, uh, here's what it means. You're gonna have seven fat years. It had to do with cattle. And seven lean years. <clears throat> Pharaoh says, what should we do? Joseph says, stock up. Every year we're going to bring 20% of the grain into storage for the seven fat years. Then we'll be able to make it through the seven lean years. And not only did Egypt make it through, I won't get into the whole story here, <clears throat> but they were able to provide for others who came to them. That's, that's an important part of preparedness. Prepare for others too. For reasons that I don't have time to get into here. Um, so just do that. Get started. Every, if, if all you can afford is a couple extra cans of something every time you go to the store, do that. At least do that. Another thing, it's not going to just prepare you for long term. It's going to help your life today. One of the tenets of integrative preparedness is that we, in, we, we prepare in such a way that it not only prepares us for bad things down the road, it improves our life today. It improves the quality of our life, our financial life, and whatever is that. With inflation going the way it is now, uh, whatever you pay for a can of soup today is probably going to be less than what you're going to be paying a month, two months, six months down the road. You know, I tell people now, my best investment has been food. I'm totally out of the stock market. I've told people that I got out right before it started coming down. I told people, but I told people it was coming. Um, but, you know, I did all right in the stock market. <clears throat> but you got to get out in time. But the thing is, <clears throat> food, when we need a, a can of corn, we don't go to the store and buy a $1.79 can of corn. We go to our supplies and we bring up a $0.29 cent can of corn because I bought it back when it was on sale for $0.29. Cents. And did I buy a couple of extra cans of corn? No, I didn't. I bought two, three, four hundred cans of corn. I, I know that's beyond what most most people, even they could afford it. If you're just getting into preparing, you'd go, oh man, I'd, I'd feel like an idiot buying that much. Well, you'd be surprised. You know, you get into it gradually and you will see. You will start to understand and develop a preparedness mindset. And there's nothing more important than having a preparedness mindset. I could go on and on, but I think that's going to be it. I'll, I'll stop it here. Um, again, <clears throat> all of our good subscribers, leave your comments down to help all the new people. And and for the, for the new people, don't feel discouraged. <clears throat> don't listen to the people that say it's too late. It's not too late until it's too late. And if it were too late, we'd all know it because there wouldn't be anything in the stores, right? Okay, not too late. Get at it. 
get at it to the extent that you can. Don't feel badly if you can't do a lot. Just get started because it's a habit you want to get into. You want to turn it into a lifestyle. It takes a few weeks to create a habit, right? It takes a few weeks to break a habit. So now start on your good habit of preparing. It's going to do wonders for you. It's going to do wonders for your, uh, <clears throat> for your peace of mind. It's going to do wonders for your economic, your financial life. And it'll do wonders when the time comes that you need it. Okay? All right. You all have a good day. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And don't let anybody discourage you <clears throat> because you didn't start 10 years ago. All right? Y'all have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.